Corey here with Team Backcountry. Today I want to talk to you guys about a couple of reloading tools that I find to be very important, especially when you're trying to build a new load for a gun. This has been in my arsenal for a couple of years. I use it literally every time I start to reload for any new gun. This is step one for me. So I'm going to crack the book open, find out what powders, pick all my components that I want to be using, and once I get there, the first thing I want to do is figure out how far to seat that bullet in. And what this tool does is it allows you to see where the lands and grooves are in your rifle. So this is an OAL length gauge from Hornady. And you'll need a couple things with it. You will need what's called a modified case. They come in these packages. Hornady has a plethora of different cartridges. If they don't have the cartridge you need, this being a 6.5 Creedmoor, you can shoot two cases and mail it off to Hornady. It's actually a little bit more accurate if you do it that way anyway because you have cases that are fire formed to your chamber where this is just a SAMI spec load. The ones you'd send off actually come out of your chamber. So what they do is they tap the back of it so it can screw onto this tool. I know guys will tap it themselves. Um, which is cool too. It's not that expensive. You can get this stuff off Amazon or your hardware store, but We'll take and we will screw that guy on there. Once again, this is a 6.5 Creedmoor Screw that onto the OAL length gauge. They make straight and curved OAL length gauges. The straight ones are for a bolt-action rifle. The curved ones are for a pump, semi-auto, lever action, anything that you can't get in from behind. So we're going to take the bolt out, make sure it's unloaded, and then I'm going to take the bullet, this is 140 grain ELD from Hornady, and we're just going to slip it in there. And this is going to lock the back side, or lock this gray rod, and that's going to push that up and down. And so we can lock that, and we want it to be sitting in there a little further than it normally would. So I'll usually run it to where the you know where that flat spot starts, and then we're gonna put it in from the back side of the rifle. I'm gonna apply pressure to this gray piece here, and then I'm going to unlock it, and I'm just gonna start pushing on this gray rod. And what that's doing is that's pushing that bullet into your lands and grooves, and you'll feel it stop. And I don't I don't push real hard at this point. Um, you'll, you'll kind of get a feel for it over time. I'll do this several times for the same rifle, especially when I start look start with a rifle or when I first start using this tool. And then you'll pull the tool out. A lot of times that bullet's not going to come with you, but you're going to leave this gray rod locked in place because I'm going to put that bullet in back in a sec. When it gets stuck in your lands and grooves there, you're not hurting anything. All you'll do is take a cleaning rod. Sometimes you can bump it on the ground if you want. But you'll take a cleaning rod, push that bullet out. And then you will take your bullet and set it back in that modified case. And because that gray piece is stuck in place, that gives us an idea of how far forward that can go before the O-Jive hits your lands and grooves. You don't care how much bullet is sitting in your lands and grooves because it's not touching. What I care about is the O-Jive is when the bullet turns into the diameter of the bullet. So right here, this is .264 on a 6.5 Creedmoor, and that's where it's running into the lands and grooves. So now what I do I can just take a caliper and I can measure the overall length here and we're looking at we're looking at 2.987 so that's my overall length a lot of times what I'll do now is I'll take them if the, you have a box mag I'll take and see will that box mag when this is pushed all the way out, will that fit in that box mag? And if it's too long, then you have to shorten it up to the box mag, which we can still use this tool to see. But if it isn't too long, then 
I'll usually use that measurement and I'll back it off 25 thousandths. Now taking it one step further, and I still think that this is very important, it's not a necessity but it definitely adds a little bit of accuracy to your gun, you can use what Hornady calls a bullet comparator. They send you inserts for several different calibers, but this bullet comparator attaches here and you have to insert whatever caliber bullet you want. They sell a six pack of these with your standard calibers. They, they make them from 17 up to 45 cal. Unfortunately, the six pack that's like 25 or 30 bucks doesn't contain the 6.5, which seems to be, you know, the hottest thing on the market. And so you do need the 14 pack, which is like 55 bucks. So I'm going to put this bullet comparator on and we can lock that in place. And what this does is this is going to act like your lands and grooves. So your ogive is going to hit that no different than in your chamber. So, and the, the reason we do this is there's some discrepancy between bullets from that ogive and the actual tip of the bullet, especially on like a boat tail hollow point like a burger. Um, you shouldn't have as much with a ballistic tip, but you definitely will. And so I'm going to run that down, and now I can measure from the base of my cartridge to the ogive, which is where my bullet runs into the lands and grooves. And right here I'm getting 3.273. Now, we have to remember there, when I'm writing that down, we've got to kill an inch. And so, the reason we kill an inch is that bullet comparator is exactly that length, which is important. So I do set that before. So, 2. 275, I'm probably with most guns just going to back it off 25 thou. So I would start reloading when I'm setting my bullet um, depth. I'm going to use this tool once again, and that's where I'm going to set it. Because when your die is pushing down on your bullet, it's pushing down on the O drive as well. And so we're just eliminating that variable of the discrepancy of from your O-drive to your bullet tip when we're using that bullet comparator. So I'm going to back it off 25 thou so I don't run into pressure issues. I'm going to use this when I'm using my seating die. And that's going to eliminate the guesswork of, well, how close can I get? How, you know, I've seen guys, you know, just slam their bolt forward and different things um, that are, you know, I don't know, not as efficient of a way to measure it. So I've really, really enjoyed this tool, it's where I start every single time. Hornady, they make a, a good product at a good price. They don't, it's not the most expensive stuff out there, but their stuff works well. So really happy with it. If you guys have any questions, put them in the comments section, hit us up on Instagram. We'd love to answer any of them we can. Thanks for watching guys.